Welcome everyone to a session on probability. Probability is the measure of the likelihood of an event to occur. For example, when a coin is tossed in the air, the possible outcomes are either head or tail. Where do we use probability? We use probability in manufacturing to check the probability of defective pieces in a sample. For example, if I am the manufacturer of certain products which need to go to a buyer, I will send a list of parts and the buyer will receive those parts and they will take a portion or a sample of, this, of the lot that I am sending and they will inspect if there is any defects within that sample that's selected. If the buyer identifies some defects in that sample that is selected, they probably would reject the entire lot back to the seller or the manufacturer. So this is a loss for the manufacturer. Therefore, as a manufacturer, based on the capability of my process, as well as the historical data on the number of defects being produced, I take a probability of the rejection rate that can come from the buyer side. This is one example. Another example could be when the project managers identify a list of risk that might impact their project schedule or project cost. They would look at each of those risks and they will assess the probability of each of those risks occurring. And when that risk occurs, what is the total cost that they will have to incur if it's a negative risk or a threat that might happen to the project due to this risk. So that's another practical use of probability. Probability is also used in weather forecasting. It is also used in sports to identify the batting average in cricket, for example. Politics, whether you would win the election or not based on various study survey that is being taken. Flipping a coin to take any sort of decision, either yes or no. Insurance companies, lotteries, playing cards, everywhere probability is used to take a decision. Let's now define probability. There are multiple methods used in calculating the probability. Let's look at the first one, which is probably the most popular one, which is known as classic method of probability. This is calculated by the number of outcomes in which the event occurs divided by the total number of possible outcomes of an experiment. Now, before we move ahead, let me just clarify. You might have a question in your mind. Why do we learn probability in Six Sigma? The use of probability as a concept is used in, in the next session when we discuss about probability distributions, which is a basic understanding that you need to carry when we do hypothesis testing and multiple other tests that should be used in solving the problem. So let's uh, get back to the classic method. The classic method is the number of outcomes in which the event occurs divided by the total number of possible outcomes of an experiment. Let me take a simple example of rolling a dice. You must have definitely played uh, multiple games like the snake and ladder when you roll a dice and the dice can give you multiple outcomes it, it can either give you point one or two three four five and six there are six different sides to each dice so if I want to understand the probability of me getting one as the outcome when I roll the dice the probability is one out of six right so we have one two three four five and six these are different possibilities of an outcome that i can expect and the possibility of getting one is one out of six now this one two six this is known as the sample space and this can also be represented in a quick formula which is p e is nothing but the probability of that specific area that I'm interested in that one number that I'm interested in is equal to n e small n e 
which is the number of outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes of an experiment which is n now let me give you another example when if i have to look at the possibility of two values right either one or two then my probability would be two by six so out of six possible outcomes that i have if i need the probability to understand either one or two then it's two by six let me ask you what is your probability of getting seven when i roll a days it is zero right absolutely zero so your probability is represented either as zero or as one so either you have a possibility of getting some outcome which is from one to six or if anything above six is completely no possibility which is zero that's how you measure probability let's look at the next one which is relative frequency of occurrence this is based on our experience or based on our historical data and the calculation goes like this which is the number of times an event occurred divided by the total number of opportunities for an event to occur simple example let's say if you want to understand the probability of you reaching office every day at 8 a.m and how do i arrive at a possibility of whether i would reach office in the next one week at 8 a.m or not so what i do is i go back and look at my you know login time for the last one month and i see that i've reached office between 7:45 to 8 a.m almost every day uh, ex except maybe 20 percent of the days so which means that my probability of reaching office at between 7:45 to 8 or by 8 a.m is 80 percent so that's based on a data historical performance or some some information that's available with you and another type of probability is subjective probability when you don't have a data then you take the judgment of people or experts to determine certain possibility of probability level we'll not get into details on this one let's understand some basic terminologies here so here an experiment that i am doing is called rolling a dice so rolling a dice is known as the experiment and the event that i am really interested in so let's say uh, i'm i'm interested in looking at the possibility or probability of even numbers when i roll the dice right which is 2 4 and 6 these are the even numbers and that is basically an event that i'm interested in now what are the elementary events which are those sample space right 2 4 and 6 those are my elementary events the sample space which will include the entire one to six possibility of when i roll the dice elementary events are only the ones which i'm really interested in imagine we have two dice and we are rolling at the same time the sample size the probability would be you know let's say in the first dice i might get one and in the second dice i might get one or in the first dice i might get one and in the second dice I might get two or in the third time when I do it first time I might get one in the second dice I might get three similarly it will go up to six so it will go up to six possibilities six times if I have two dice being rolled at the same time that makes it 36 so my total sample space is going to be 36 in this scenario Let's look at some more concepts now. Unions and intersections. So I have to conduct an experiment here and I'm calling this experiment as experiment A and I want to get the odd numbers which is 1, 3 and 5 from rolling dice and I want to visually represent this using a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram contains a box and a circle and the experiment here I would represent that in a circle which is a and the space the overall sample space i have is represented in a box which is one two three four five and six and a is just a portion of this entire space so i have two possibilities here either get a as an outcome or not a 
so not a is represented as a bar or it is known as complement of a therefore my total possibility which is equal to 1 which is pos probability of a plus probability of a bar which is equal to 1 then let me add another experiment here I want to do an experiment of B which is 1 2 and 3 in experiment A it was 1 3 and 5 in experiment B it is 1 2 and 3 now couple of digits is common here 1 and 3 are common between experiment A and experiment B so if I represent that in a Venn diagram these two experiments would obviously overlap right so these two circles will overlap and 1 and 3 which is common will fall somewhere in this area now this is called intersection this is also known as union which is represented by u which is nothing but a or b and intersection we will represent as u upside down which is also a and b few more concepts on probability mutually exclusive events let's look at the same Venn diagram if we have two events A and B and if there are no intersection between the two both are mutually exclusive so if I do a probability of A and B which is the A intersection B I would get a probability of 0 this is called mutually exclusive events and then we have independent events let me take this example of dice again if I look at the probability of 1 the probability first time when I roll the dice it will be 1 by 6 and if I repeat the experiment I will still get the probability as 1 by 6 which means that these events are independent now let me explain you what is a dependent event another example I have a ball which has three green balls and two red balls and I am conducting an experiment and I am picking one ball out of these five so my probability of getting a green ball would be three out of five so totally five balls in which three are green so my probability of getting one green would be three by five now if I remove that one which is the first green which I took during my first experiment I will be left with two balls of green and two of red now if I do another probability calculation then my probability of getting a green ball would be just two out of four and this is called a dependent event Now what is a complementary event? This is something we have already seen earlier. If I show this on a Venn diagram, so the experiment A, anything outside of A would be not A or it is also represented as A bar. So if I want to calculate the probability of A bar, then this would be 1 minus probability of A. therefore the probability of A and probability of A bar if you add up you would get it you get the value as 1 what are marginal union and joint probabilities let's take another example in a town we have a, a group of people who own a car and we have a group of people who own a house now if I look at the car first 100 out of 1000 have a car when I look at that probability that's called a marginal probability on the other side if you look at 100 of them have a car or 200 have a house is a union probability and 100 have a house and a car is called joint probability so that's your intersection where you have a joint probability 
union probability is 100 or 200 a and b put together 100 out of 1000 is marginal probability is just a having a probability in the entire town let's now look at the additional law of probability in a town we have 100 of them 100 out of 1000 who have a car and 200 of them have a house and 50 of them have both house and a car let's look at two scenarios here one there is no intersection a and b so the probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b which is 100 by 1000 plus 200 by 1000 so that gives us 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is equal to 0 0.3 the second or the second scenario here a and b have an intersection of 50 people who has both car and house so then probability of a union b here would become probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection probability of b which is 100 divided by 1000 plus 200 by 1000 minus 50 by 1000 so that makes it 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.05 so that gives us 0 0.25 so that's the addition law of probability let's now look at the multiplication law starting with the independent event so the multiplication law of independent event is probability of a union b is equal to probability of a multiplied by probability of b here is an example of tossing a coin so if i toss a coin the probability of me getting a head or a tail is half which is one by two and if i toss the coin again if i got head first time the second time the probability of getting a head or a tail is again one by two which is why it's called an independent event the probability does not change even if you repeat the experiment more than once so if i got tail the first time the probability of getting a head or tail the second time again remains one by two now applying the multiplication law here probability of a union b is equal to probability of a into probability of b i would get for the first instant when i got head as the first time when i did the tossing the probability of getting head would be 1 by 4 and probability of getting tail would be 1 by 4 probability of getting head would be 1 by 4 and probability of getting tail would be 1 by 4 and as per the law of probability all these probabilities put together is equal to 1 now let's see the multiplication law of dependent event we take another example here there are 10 pieces in total of parts which we have to inspect and out of them we have 9 which are good and 1 is a defective piece now to find the probability of good and defective in the first case my probability of getting good is 9 out of 10 because there are 9 good parts out of 10 and probability of getting one defective when I pick first time is 1 out of 10 now because this is a an dependent event once I pick either of them I will remove that piece from the total sample then when I conduct my second time when I pick the second part my probability of getting good is just 8 out of 9 because we've already removed one good part from it so we are left with only total 9 out of that the probability is 8 out of 9 and what's the probability of defective that will remain 1 out of 9 instead of 1 out of 10 now let's say I picked up the bad or the defective one first time so then the second time when I do it 
the probability of getting good would become 9 out of 9 because the defective one is already removed. And what would be the probability of getting a defective one the second time? It's going to be 0. So then I apply the multiplication law. It becomes 9 by 10 multiplied by 8 by 9 in the first case. Second case it's 9 by 10 into 1 by 9 and 1 by 10 and into 9 by 9 in the third case. 1 by 10 into 0 as the fourth case. Now from the uh, previous multiplication law that we have taken the probability of A union B it was probability of A multiplied by probability of B however we will also add another rule here which is probability of A union B is equal to probability of A multiplied by probability of B given A which means that we are considering the one piece which was dependent which is removed out of the sample. That's how we calculate the multiplication or that's how we look at the multiplication law of dependent event. Let's now look at another two concepts of probability permutation and combination. So we start with permutation. A permutation is when the order of selection matters. Let me give you an example. There are five balls in a box and we need to pick two out of them with an order of one by one. So you first pick ball number one and then you pick ball number two. Now there are totally different, you know, there are five different balls and then if we have to look at all possible or all po probable combination of picking two balls, then we'll have to list it down by you know one two and then picking two and one then picking three and one so there are different combinations that we can think of so here is a formula for doing it so the npr n is the total number probability of r is the one which we are going to pick is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial so what is n factorial? n factorial is 5 factorial in this case divided by 5 minus 2 factorial. So 5 factorial is calculated by 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So that's factorial. And 5 minus 2 which is 3 factorial is 3 into 2 into 1. So we get the probability of this permutation is 20. Okay, so this is when the order of selection matters. We have to pick one first and then pick the second ball. Now what happens when the order doesn't matter? In such case, we use another formula which is called NCR is equal to N factorial divided by N minus R factorial into R factorial. So then for the formula will become for N factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 divided by 5 minus 3 which is 3 factorial into 2 factorial so 3 into 2 into 1 into 2 into 1 so then you get 10 so this is when the order doesn't matter so this is called combination 